They are already weak, and in the trenches, they are trapped with their backs exposed, making them vulnerable to predators. This generation of bison is the first in 70 years to fall prey to gray wolves. Reintroduced to Yellowstone in 1995, the wolves are learning to hunt bison and are starting to follow the herds on their winter migration. Along the thermal areas of the Nez Perce and Firehole Rivers, the bison find exposed grass to help them survive until spring. Wild as they may be, the Yellowstone bison are far more tolerant of human interference in the winter. They have learned to share the groomed roads with winter visitors on noisy snowmobiles. It's stressful, but they're smart enough to know that they don't have the energy to fight. But the migrating bison can't read maps or signs. They don't know there is a border they cannot cross. If they do, they can be sent to slaughter or hazed back into the park. Activist Mike Mees of the Buffalo Field Campaign watches over the Yellowstone bison when they leave the park. His members use video and still cameras as weapons to try to protect the roaming herd. From a small log cabin near West Yellowstone, the Buffalo Field Campaign runs a media operation that sends their tape around the world. We document every move made against the buffalo and basically keep our government agencies in check. When agents from the Montana Department of Livestock haze or capture the bison out of fear of brucellosis, they will most likely end up on tape and sometimes on the national news. They are approximately a half mile outside of Yellowstone National Park, and on this particular day, they hazed them four and a half miles all the way down the Madison River to capture them at the Horse Butte Trap. The hazing and capture operations of Montana's Department of Livestock across Yellowstone's western border continue to draw national attention because they occur on Forest Service land where many feel the bison should be protected. It's ironic that the Yellowstone bison can legally be harassed and killed on federal land. At the turn of the century, the surviving wild bison were under attack in Yellowstone. Trophy collectors coveted their heads and skins in the winter of 1894, Army scouts captured the notorious buffalo poacher, Edward Howell, while he was killing bison in Pelican Valley. The soldiers confiscated his skins and heads, but there were no laws to prosecute him for the slaughter. All they could do was escort Howell and his dog out of the park. An article in the press enraged the public. By May of 1895, Congress passed the Lacey Act, making it a federal crime to kill an animal on government land. It was the first Federal Wildlife Protection Act in the country. The bison in Pelican Valley are still the most isolated buffalo in Yellowstone. Hunters are back on the same trail as the old buffalo poachers. Their mission is cold and dangerous. They must get close and personal with the bison to succeed. But this time, they'll be shooting for science. Gravitate to the one thing.